Dreaming Big 101 There are many famous statements that encourage people to pursue their ambitions. People are encouraged by every life coach and self-help guru to dream enormous dreams and to never give up on pursuing those dreams. And many people who achieve greatness proclaim to the rest of the world that anyone can achieve success beyond measure so long as they follow their passions and pursue their goals. One of the most famous quotes attributed to Walt Disney is all of our dreams can come true, if we have the courage to follow them. Those who believe that they do not have any goals to pursue or who are unsure of where to begin may experience feelings of confusion or alienation when listening to all of this discussion about pursuing one's ambitions, despite the fact that such language sounds wonderful. And while there are many voices that encourage individuals to follow their dreams, there are also many voices who describe the impact that stress, sadness, and anxiety have on one's ability to dream. Today, we are going to talk about how to work your way up to dreaming big, regardless of whether your goals have been placed on hold or whether the circumstances of your life have inhibited your capacity to connect with your sense of wonder. What exactly does it entail to have a dream? Dreams can be thought of as cherished hopes, ideals, or desires. Your dreams can be about yourself or about other people, they can be large or small, tame or grandiose, and they can be any combination of these things. In addition, it is essential to keep in mind that every single one of your dreams is unique, just like a snowflake. You are the only person who can fulfill your goals, therefore fight the urge to use someone else's experience as a guide. Let your mind wander. Ask yourself what appeals to your sense of curiosity or amusement. Do not worry if you find yourself unable to leave this area. Look back to when you were a youngster, or recall a point in your life when you were filled with optimism and felt completely free. What was it that captivated your attention back then? If you find that this line of thinking evokes challenging feelings, you should lay aside this practice and select a dream at random instead. You can try out some dreams by giving a TED talk. Here are some dreams you can try on for size. Putting in a week of backcountry hiking through a tropical rainforest. Achieving a native level of fluency in Portuguese. Putting a purple dye on your hair. Adopting an alpaca. Some of these things will make you laugh, some will feel like an immediate yes or no, and one or two of them may pique your attention and provide you with a place to begin. It's possible that blonde is more your style than purple for your hair, though. It's possible that adopting an alpaca won't work out for you, but the thought of bringing home a new cat is really cute. Imagine this as wandering around a mall in search of your fantasies. There are no commitments, all that is involved are ideas and the beginning stages of thinking on a grand scale. Step 2, once you've zeroed in on a probable dream that you want to pursue, the next step is to put it to the test. Assume that you are about to give a talk at TED, for instance. Imagine how that would make you feel. On what would you like to talk? What would you choose to put on? Is there a particular quote that you like and that you'd like to use in the speech? Imagine if there is a room full of people listening intently to everything you have to say. How would you feel? If you were given a standing ovation, how would it make you feel? Would it make you feel ecstatic with excitement, or would it make you feel humbled and grateful? Consider how you would like to feel as you move forward with this phase, and pay attention to what comes up for you as you imagine reaching that state. Do you get an exciting feeling? Nervous? Undeserving? Sad? Hopeful? When you are working through these first two steps, be gentle with yourself and allow yourself some grace. Keep in mind that although your sentiments are real, they only last for a short time. Make a mental note of how you feel, and then give yourself permission to let those sensations pass. Instead of allowing yourself to become bogged down in self-blame, remorse, or guilt, the aim of this stage is to try on dreams. I feel obligated to add that this is not the time to be thinking about the mechanics of the situation. We are just beginning to establish the groundwork at this point. The first two phases could take as little as an hour or as much as a week to complete. Take things easy and entertain as many different ideas as you can. While you are working through this step, you should try your best to keep an attitude of curiosity and patience. 
Step 3. Now that you've given yourself some time to think about some potential fantasies and you've pictured yourself in a variety of various situations, it's time to start doing some research. If you have made the decision to learn a new language, such as Italian, now is the time to begin taking the necessary steps toward gaining a grasp of what is involved in doing so. You may get started by looking at language learning programs in your area, as well as free or low-cost language learning services online such as Babbel and Duolingo. If you have made the decision to travel, you can search YouTube to locate videos that provide first-person descriptions of what it is like to visit a variety of sites across the world. There are vlogs available that show places such as Bali, the Florida Keys, Iceland, and even Niagara Falls. There are also networks that broadcast first-person videos of people hiking certain trails in national parks around the country. You can also read about the adventures of other people who have traveled to those locations by browsing through Reddit or travel forums. The world is now more accessible than it has ever been, and as a result, there are a multitude of ways in which you can travel to virtually any location on the planet without leaving the convenience of your own home. This step is a lot of fun since the more you study, the more information you'll have to either become enthused about your option or switch things up. The more you learn, the more information you'll have. It's possible that after reading about traveling in Iceland, you'll decide that you'd rather go to Alaska instead. Maybe you thought it would be cool to learn Italian at first, but now you've decided that studying American Sign Language is more interesting to you. The more you know, the more power you have. The more you know, the more possibilities you'll become aware of in your life. As you continue to learn more about your prospective desire, keep in mind that your neighborhood library is one of the most beneficial resources of all because you are able to borrow many of the library's resources for free. You may get information about books, movies, maps, and even community groups that get together to talk about specific topics or hobbies by going to the library in your area. You may determine the location of the library in your neighborhood by searching the term library, your city and state on Google or going to the website libraryfinder.org. Step 4. Now that you've explored different types of dreams, determined how you want to feel, and investigated the various paths available to you, it's time to make a decision about which dream you want to follow. There are many different paths you can take to turn your idea into a reality. I can't stress enough how important it is for you to get started with a basic SMART objective. Not familiar with the concept of SMART goals? No worries. The planning process known as SMART reduces goals down into more manageable steps. There is a link in the description box that describes the item. I am grateful that you were able to spend some time with me today. Leave a comment below and tell me which of your fantasies you went window shopping for today.